a $30 reward offered for a man named Amos. This crinkled up paper chronicling a profound piece of history, a slave owner in search of his runaway. That document is one of a considerable collection that's now at Washington College after being discovered in an attic and saved from an auction. Yeah, local historians say the papers give us a real glimpse into what life was like here back when slavery was prominent. By preserving and presenting this collection, their hope is that by learning from the past, we can help change the future. Here's Delmarva Life's Katie Zarelli. We're here on the campus of Washington College in Chestertown, which has just become home to thousands of rare historic documents, many of which give us a real look into the lives of African Americans living in this area hundreds of years ago. It puts some authenticity to the stories that I've been hearing through the years. It was like, now I'm holding a piece of that history that these people actually existed. It's not just on paper, but these were people in this community who actually had their stories. Stories like a young woman escaping slavery with her 15-month-old child, or the free African-American man who purchased freedom for another stories that were almost never shared. I panicked when I got this email. Mary Alice Ball is the Dean of the Library and Academic Technology at Washington College. The email she's talking about stated that a large collection of historic papers that had been discovered in a local attic would be going up for auction. She immediately contacted this man. Adam Goodhart is the director of the Star Center for the Study of the American Experience at Washington College. So we went and assessed the collection and found that there were just extraordinary things, ranging from what turned out to be one of the earliest known fugitive slave broadsides from anywhere in America, um, to documents where individuals were being bought and sold and rented um, as enslaved people. Early Ringgold Johnson went with Adam to view the documents. She's a community historian with the Chesapeake Heartland Archive. It was chilling because you realize that how old the documents were, uh, and this was history. I mean, as much as you read about history, uh, that's one thing. But then to know that you're actually holding history in your hands, um, that, was, that was pretty significant, yeah. Wanting to avoid the documents going to auction, they made an offer to purchase them, which was accepted. Adam says community donations helped make it possible. This was really a beautiful example of lots of people from the community coming together. People like the Commodore family, who the collection is now named after. People who desire every deep detail to be known. These papers really um, present a very textured and multi-layered, complicated picture um, of this community 200 years ago. Um, it shows a community in which uh, many African Americans were enslaved, but those people were also working hard to secure their freedom and their family's freedom, finding all kinds of ways to challenge slavery, ranging from um, escaping, and we have a number of really dramatic documents that show stories of successful self-liberation. But also, these documents really portray the, the daily life um, of this area. So many layers that can stir up so many sentiments. Carolyn Brooks is also a local community historian. It's very saddening at first, but then I realized that it was triumphant to me to see that they carried on, they just didn't give up the resilience that they had. She says that resiliency is still required as race relations continue to need attention. Everybody should be treated the same, everybody should have the same opportunities. And until we get to that point, this country will always be divided, it will never be a great country. To me, responsibility is the most important thing. And reading those papers, looking at those documents does make me feel a sense of responsibility and makes me feel that restitution um, needs to be made and needs to be made by, by all of us, no matter what our ancestors um, were doing in 1820. It's a responsibility he takes seriously, evidenced by his efforts to find family of Congo Mango, the former slave who purchased another slave's freedom. Adam has made meaningful contact with a few direct descendants. She just wrote back to me very quickly and said, I wept as I read your email. Um, and so to, to know that all of us involved can be part of 
those um, reconnections for families, I think makes us feel like the work that we do as historians is important. It's important and impactful work that Airly says can't end here. We've lost enough of our history. You know, it's time for all of us to actually dig deeper in our, our attics, our basements, our storage units, um, and realize that papers are just not trash. It tells a story. We gave so much to this society. We built so many of the buildings. We fought in all of the wars that this country has had. We have a rich culture and we're continuing to show the rich culture and sharing it with the community here in Kent County and we will move out of Kent County into the entire Eastern Shore. And the resources they've already been given to share, they won't take for granted. My hope is that, yes, we, the library, can support the work of the Star Center in promoting and making the Commodore collection accessible. And through the archives of the past will hopefully come a future of understanding and unity. My dream would be that all the races, all the cultures learn to respect each other, understand that we all have a story. Then we'll have a better understanding to be able to move forward rather than staying in our own areas with what's familiar to us. So many stories, so much we can learn. Jimmy and Lisa? And Adam says the papers are currently being processed at Miller Library at the college. He adds that the documents that contain black history, though, housed at the college, will be owned by a local nonprofit called Sumner Hall. How fascinating. In an attic. In an attic. Safe from an auction. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.